So let's understand about the democratic rights or what do you understand by rights, right? All over the world, in a suspicious activity, US government picked so many people, not only from America, but outside from America also. Amnesty International, uh, International Organization for Human Rights, they spoke about this event. They put limelight about this event to the international media. Hello students. So let's understand about the democratic rights or what do you understand by rights, right? So we might have seen that there are so many countries in the world and these countries follow different type of government. When we talk about government, that means a government which is either elected by the people of that country like in India, we have a largest democracy, people elect their leaders, these leaders came into the power and make laws for the people, right? But in India, we have seen that India adopted democracy after India got independent from the British rule. But when we were in British rule, we will easily understood that that is an alien power, the power which is not belongs to India. They exploit Indian population, they exploit Indian citizens. There were no rights, common rights, common basic rights for the Indians when there was a rule of British Empire in India, right? Similarly, there are different countries in the world. If you talk about the China, Myanmar, North Korea, where there is a no form of government which is known as democracy. So there is a two aspect of this chapter. In first, we will understand that the rights or the fundamental rights, these rights which is given to the citizen by any country and its constitution, but it is not available in those form of government when people are not having any democratic government. If that government is ruled by military dictator, definitely there is no rights. Citizens cannot protest. protest. Citizens have no basic rights to live in that country. They are no, they, there will be no freedom of the citizens to the citizens who can do whatever they want to do, right? So that is how we can say in India, citizens have some fundamental rights which is basic and equal to each and every citizen of India, right? So let's understand some case studies and uh, with the help of these case studies, we can compare that in democratic countries, what are fundamental rights and in other form of government or countries, what are the procedures of these type of rights? Now, let's understand the first example, which is known as that the prison of Guantanamo Bay. Now, Guantanamo Bay is a region uh, which is uh, available into the Cuba Islands near the North America, right? About 600 peoples were secretly picked up by the US forces. That means United States, when the Twin Tower uh, terrorist attack was happened on America in 2001, right? So from all over the world, in a suspicious activity, US government picked so many people, not only from America, but outside from America also to investigate these people, to, to basically uh, ask questions related to that terrorist attack. American US forces put all these people on the base of suspicious. There is not available of solid proof that these people are responsible for, for such acts. But on the Bay of Suspicion, these people were kept in Guantanamo Bay jail, an area near Cuba controlled by American Navy. First of all, illegal, illegal uh, occupation by the, of these people is completely illegal by US forces, right? But the American government said that there were enemies of the US and linked to the attack. All these people have some link to the US attack which happened on 11th of September 20, uh, two, uh, 2001, right? So that was the period 2001 when US faced first terrorist attack in his history and after on the basis of suspicion so many people of different religion, different uh, countries, people were uh, secretly picked up by America and they were kept into the Guantanamo Bay jail, right? Now, in most cases, the government of that country, the citizen who belongs to that particular country, is kept that knowledge or information by the uh, government who kept their citizens. And countries were not asked or even informed about the imprisonment. But even this 600 peoples and their hostility towards US forces, they were kept in Guantanamo Bay. Their, respond, their corresponding countries' government were not aware of this, right? Families of prisoners, even media who want to control this coverage, even UN representatives, United Nations, which is known as an international body of collaboration of all the countries, they were not allowed to meet them. That is how America has done his power. They use, they use their power that they were the developed country of the world. And the US Army arrested them, interrogate, ask questions related to that terrorist attack and decided whether to keep their, them or not. That means illegal possession of these people were against the fundamental rights of human. There was no trial. That means these people cannot hire any, uh, we can say, lawyer or uh, they cannot have right to protect themselves and right to, basically we can say, right to present themselves in front of judges or judiciary. 
before any magistrate in US nor could these prisoners approach courts in their own country. Right. Then Amnesty International, a uh, international organization for human rights, they spoke about this event. They put limelight about this event to the international media. Amnesty International, an international human rights organization, collected information on the conditions of these prisoners in Guantanamo Bay and reported that the prisoners were being tortured by the US forces while they have interrogated these people. So that is how we can say that illegally kept any person from either on either in his own country or another country is a violation of fundamental basic right. Right. Now, they're being, they're being denied by the treatment that even prisoners of war must get as per international treaties. And Amnesty International put their theory that even the even when there is a war between two countries and the soldiers who were kept of the another country, they were have some basic treatment which is according to the war treatment, which is not given to these Guantanamo Bay prisoners. Many prisoners had tried protesting against these conditions on going on hunger strike and many of them were uh, died during the interrogation, which was very harsh and they used the third degree in physical torture during the in their interrogation. Right. Now, prisoners were not released even after they were officially declared not guilty when it is identified that these people, some people have not involved in this US terrorist attack, but still they were not freed by the US forces. Now, an independent inquiry on the UN supported these findings and that is how the UN Secretary General said that the prison in Guantanamo Bay should be closed down but US government because US is a powerful country, they refused to do so and accept these pleas because they want to take revenge of their terrorist attack. So that is how one condition we have seen, one case we have seen in which peoples were illegally kept by a country's government without informing their families, their respective countries. Is it a violation of fundamental rights? Now, let's understand that why rights are necessary. So whenever we talk about rights, it is very clear that rights or fundamental rights which is given to the citizens is provided by constitution of that country. Now, it's very easy to understand that if there is no constitution, no elected government in any country and government is based on religion or a hierarchical ruler or we can say a military ruler, they cannot give you fundamental rights. There is no right of citizens. They were mass killing of citizens. They cannot protest. They were crushed by the military power like in Pakistan, Myanmar, North Korea, China, we can say and in different parts of the world. So rights are important in a country where there is a democratic government, right? So you can protect yourself even from the government, like we have seen in the case of Serbian government. Even you can have protest against the government or the lawmaking body, or you can protect your life also, right? So rights in democracy. So when we talk about rights, so rights are basic and equal, which is given to citizens without the discrimination, without discrimination of poor, rich, uh, region specific like Odisha and Rajasthan. Rights are equal, which is provided by government, right? Rights are the claims of person over other fellow beings over the society and over the government, right? So basically, rights are basic, which is equal to all. We are saying which is equal to all. So what are these rights in Indian government and Indian constitution after India got independent? Our leaders already aware that uh, we have chosen a form of government in which people elect their government and, and the leaders continuously changing after years. So there should be some basic laws which is written in constitution and there should be some basic rights which, which citizens got and they can protect themselves in terms of if government exploit or any other uh, any other power exploits them, right? So all of us want to live happily as we all know without fear and without being subjected to degraded treatment. For this we ex expect others to behave in a such way that does not harm us or hurt us. When we were in the rule of British period, Britishers exploited racial discrimination, racial discriminated Indians on the basis of race, they were superior on the basis of color, they discriminated people. So after independence, we have made a provision that no one can discriminate it even on sex, male, female, even a place of birth or even a race, caste or religion. Equally, our action should not also harm or hurt others. So the right is possible when you make a claim that is equally possible for others. That means right is equal to each and every citizen in a country. It is not distinct region wise, citizen wise or even male, female wise. You cannot have a right to harm others. You cannot have right to play a game in such way that it breaks the neighbor's window, right? That means it's a simple idea that you cannot claim your right and violate some other's right. The Serbs in Yugoslavia, as we have seen, could not have claimed the whole country for themselves. The claims we make should be reasonable. That the, the country, Yugoslavia, when it was fragmented, there is an equal right on land of even Serbs and Albanians. There should be such that can 
that can be made available to others in equal measure and that is a right comes with an obligation to respect other right. Just because we claim something, it does not become our right. Like I am saying that I have a right of religion, but I am infringing some other person's religion by commenting or by disgrading him. It has to be recognized by the society we live in and rights acquire meaning only in society. That, that is why people in older times, they follow social laws, right? We, we often talk about that after constitution, democracy, people become civilized. But in older times, where there is no government, there is no such provision of laws, kings rule the regions. At that time, societal laws frame the people, in which we have seen that people live in a society, live in a religious society, live in a uh, caste-based society. But that social laws cannot be deployed in new time, right? Every society makes certain rules to regulate or to live in, right? They form laws. Even when you are living in a family, there were some laws. Even when you are going to school, there are some laws which you have to follow. So laws are for people that people can should stay together and uh, and basically stay in harmony. They tell us what is right and what is wrong, what is recognized by society as rightful becomes the basis of right. Now, that is why the notion of rights, that means the scope of right change from time to time and society to society. With the passage of time, we need new laws should be made and older will be erased or changed. 200 years ago, anyone who said that women should have right to vote, that was very new thing at that time. Because at that time, and even we can say women have not that much participation in voting percent. But right now, women can test election, they cast vote, and they are part of election system. But almost 200 years ago, this was not feasible for the population. But still, in Saudi Arabia, women does not have right to vote. After 2017, they got right to vote. It is new time we are talking about. So that is how we can say it is changed to country to country, it will change society to society. Now, when the socially recognized claims are written into the law and they acquire real force, like in India, there is a constitution. In constitution, there are laws. Similarly, fundamental rights are also laws, right? If I'm saying that fundamental, that means which is basic and common to live in, live for a person into a country, fundamental rights from article 14 to 32, that means law number 14 to 32, these are also laws and to, to follow such guideline, government also have to follow these laws and citizens have to follow these laws too. And natural and moral rights. So these rights are powerful because it is written in constitution. Constitution is recognized by the country and even by the citizen and by the government. The prisoners of Guantanamo Bay had a moral claim not to be tortured or humiliated. But still, the US forces torture them and they cannot have right to protect themselves. But they could not go to anyone in any court to enforce them because they were illegally kept by another country's government. Right. Now, question may be asked that why a government which is kept illegally a different citizen of different country, but that country has not power outside that, that land or that area. Right. When law recognizes some claims, they become enforceable. That means if I'm saying that Indian fundamental rights are enforceable, that means citizen can go to the courts or to judiciary to protect their rights. That means these laws, these rights were enforceable by government or even by the judiciary. So you can protect yourself within a country. We are not saying that outside the country, but within the country. We can then demand their application when fellow citizens or government do not respect these rights, we can call the violation of these rights and we can move to the courts for justice. That is the power of fundamental rights when you are living in a country. Now, in such circumstances, citizens can approach to the courts to protect their right and that is the main important thing about these fundamental rights. So if we want to call any or claim any right, it has to have these three qualities. Rights are reasonable, that means if I am asking for something, that should be reasonable. If I'm asking something to my government or my country, that is reasonable. It is not that right that I can ask that I want the property of Mukesh Ambani or some property of some other person. It is not your right, right? If I'm asking something which is broad, in a broader way, which is equal, equally, equally distributed to other citizens. Claims of person recognized by society and sanctioned by the law. Now, so why do we need rights in a democracy? Just take an example. If I am living in a country and there is no uh, there is a national religion of that country and I belongs to a minority, I may live in a threat that sometime it's possible that majority religion dominate the other. And it has happened in different parts of the world. It has happened in Sri Lanka when Sinhala is the majority religion and they exploited, discriminated Tamilians, killing, mass killings of Tamilians. It has happened in different parts of the world when majority population dominated the minority. So in that country, there should be some basic rights and even it was followed by government and also by the of, of the people of that country. 
So in Indian constitution, we have some different types of fundamental rights. Rights are necessary for every sustenance of democracy. Again, we are only considering that rights are available in democracies. Definitely rights are not available to other countries which is not democratic or it was ruled by another power or it is ruled by some other power. In a democracy, every citizen has to have the right to vote. First of all, in democracy, you already know that you cast your vote, you elect your government and definitely these representatives are under pressure because you have select them, you can eliminate them in next election. So that is why government is responsible and they will ask and they will uh, basically they look into your matters and the right to be elected the government. For democratic elections to take place, it is necessary that citizens should have rights to express their opinion. If I am not uh, satisfied with the government work, if I am not satisfied with some minister, some PM, some president, I've, I have a right to express my views into newspaper, into television. That is the power of freedom of expression and belief, which is given to only in democratic countries. You cannot expect this thing in China, when the Chinese government cannot tolerate any citizen go against the government, because there is no democracy in China, right? From political parties and take part in political activities. Now, why democracy is powerful throughout the world and in demand in different countries throughout the world? Because it is citizen-centric. If citizens are not happy with the rule of government, they can change government. Democracy understands the needs and requirement of the citizen. That is why it is, uh, it is flourishing in different countries. But still, different countries follow different types of government. Rights are also perform a very special role in democracy. Rights protect minorities or the people caste, either based on caste, either based on religion or other ethnicity. They protect minorities. They make such laws in which minorities are protected. Their educational, economical development should be there. From the operation of majority, like I have given example of Sinhala community in Sri Lanka. They ensure that majority cannot do whatever it likes and rights are guarantees which can be used when things go against the citizens. Things may go wrong when some citizens wish to take away the rights of others. If a majority government try to humiliate minority population, they discriminated in terms of economical, educational and development background, then these people were not able to develop if there was no right. So right protects minorities. Now, this usually happens when those in majority want to dominate the minority because they were in small number. Now, the government should protect the citizens' right in such a situation, but sometimes elected governments may not protect or may even attack the rights of their own citizens. So it also happens. So that is why constitution checks with the help of fundamental right, rights that even government cannot use over power. Now, that is why some rights need to be placed higher than the government. Even government has to take, uh, we can say has to respect the fundamental rights and the government cannot violate them. That means government cannot over, use over power or violates the fundamental rights or violates the citizens need and requirement. In most democracies, the basic rights of citizens are written down in constitution and written constitution like in India is the powerful tool because anything which is written in constitution, government cannot overrule it. If there was no written constitution, it might possible that some government take whatever decisions they want to take because there is nothing written in anywhere who can challenge them. So written constitution is also powerful too. So that is how we can say the, the needs, the requirements of the constitution, the requirement of the rights are very important.